because I know when people listen to a conversation, they get ideas. It's like something inside their mind, just they just get ideas and it opens up new thoughts for them. And that's, yeah. that's why we're doing this podcast. That's the idea. It's not, and it's just nice to be inspired by others. Hi, everyone. Welcome to We're Open Podcast. My name's Alicia Power, and I'm a spiritual intuitive. And myself and Claudine Grimwood, my dear friend, longtime friend Claudine Grimwood, we get together and create this podcast to talk about spirituality. I've been working with my spiritual journey for 40 years. I've been a spiritual teacher for 40 years. And Claudine is near the beginning of her spiritual development and her spiritual exploration. And between us, we just have a lot of fun answering your questions. So with that, I'd like to welcome Claudine. Claudine, Hello. welcome. Hi, Alicia. How are you? I'm really great. And it's just so good to see you. And, and I'm excited for our conversation today. We're going to be answering people's questions. We're going to have a little bit of fun, just dive together and just see where the conversation goes. This is completely unscripted. We're just going to dive in. Yes. Great. Great to be here again. I Looking know. Forward to it. Yes. Okay. So let's just see who, what the what the question is and, and who it is that's been uh, sending in a question. Okay. So I've got a question today from Tracy. Tracy asks, how can I get well mentally and physically so I can do what I came here to do? So right. thank, thank you, Tracy. Um, I've got a little quote just to start us off with, to go with that question, Alicia. Go for it. So we've got health is a state of complete harmony of the body, mind and spirit. When one is free from physical disabilities and mental distractions, the gates of the soul open. Wow. And that's from BKS Iyengar, which is a famous yogi. Yeah, yoga okay. teacher. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful yoga teacher. I mean, my God, the Iyengar yoga movement and Iyengar himself, just, you know, such a, just started. Not, I mean, there are so many who, Indian masters who came and taught yoga in the West, but he was certainly one of the most significant. My goodness gracious me, Ayanga. And who best to know than him? <laughs> Ayanga. Oh my goodness, what a start. What what a quote. And I, I just want to say that what an important question, Claudine. And I know you really feel this too, of the temple, the body is the temple. And um having our emotions clear, having our body strong, healthy, having our mind settled, calm, comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's so much, it's all linked, isn't it? That, isn't it? That question, it just really um, illustrated to me how mind, body and soul, often we might work on one, one or the other, but I'm learning it's so, it's all linked, um, mind, body and soul. And yeah, it's, um, I think both, that they all go together. We can't work on one without the other. Mm -hmm. And people who work very deeply with their yoga practice understand this, that the mind-body connection leads into a deeper spiritual connection. Uh, you know, the cleansing exactly. of, the cleansing, because I work with the electromagnetic field with the aura a lot as a, as a psychic healer, as an energy worker. Uh, and I'm so aware that, for example, let's just go, for example, with yoga. A lot of people aren't doing yoga who are watching this, but I'm just going to use that as an example where people have a daily practice of opening up their meridians and their chakras, their energy systems, their energy portals and gateways in their body through body movement and flexing the body and sort of kicking out sort of old crusty energy just letting it flow out exactly. just by just by flexing it so so the the scaffolding the energy scaffolding off the physical body is where i play um, and i'm so aware that regular physical movement and especially i think for me um that whole yoga stretching and flexing and move movement uh, freeze the energy systems of the body. And then there's 
it's so much easier for fresh um, psychic energy, you could say, etheric energy, you could say, to flood the physical body so it then sits on a healthy framework, on a health, healthy yes. scaff scaffolding is what I like to say. And then the physical body can actually sort of map itself on a healthy um, framework. And so you get healthier. Yeah. The physical body actually gets healthier. The cells replicate uh, more easily, correctly, more healthily rather than degenerate. Yeah. If the, if the energy systems of the body are healthy. Anyway, what were you going to say? Um, well, I think a lot of the time we, we are looking um, outwardly at supplements and uh, medications and things um, where a lot of it's coming, we can go back inside and that's, with yoga and meditation um, and would you say that a lot of physical and mental ailments are blocks within us blocks for sure energy. yeah so uh, that's exactly what i see that is exactly what i see so i see that a lot mm, yeah see a lot of people haven't moved their body for a very long time and so their lymphatic systems are coagulated they're all kind of stuck it's like it's very thick um, you know, the blood thickens and the all the different fluids in the body thicken because their body hasn't actually moved, you know, gone for a yes. brisk walk, you know, or pushed the heart rate up. So a lot of people's health suffers just through a lack of education of how to support mm. it. So yeah. regular movement, what you put in your mouth is what your body becomes, <laughs> right? Yes. So, so diet clean diet uh is so important these are just basics these these are just the basics what you put in your body through in your mouth is what your your body becomes movement psychology happiness i work a lot with cleaning the energy field right keeping it clean i find mm -hmm. personally that when i keep my energy field clean my body stays comfortable and healthy um just really quickly most of us have had childhood traumas of some kind or another where we've bumped into something hard and tough and a big challenge in childhood and a lot of emotional baggage if you, you could you could call it sticks um kind of like a stone hitting a a windscreen of a car it creates a pattern in the auric field like a a scarring pattern almost and right. the physical the physical body's like a child it'll just match the energy patterns of your auric field so if there's a energy pattern like that where there's emotional there's been an emotional hit um it it shows up for someone with psychic sight it shows up as an energy pattern in the in the uh, etheric blueprints you could you could say right. and then the physical body in in the area where that emotional <clears throat> psychological rough moment lodged itself uh, psycho psychologically. There's actually positions in the auric field where we get impressions of our reality. Like if something's coming at us that challenges us and that really hurts us, we get a reaction and it um, our emotional psychological self tightens up and that creates that coagulation in the electromagnetic energetic scaffolding right. and what I'm what I'm leading to is that it creates a tightness there and in that area wherever it is where it's communication or you just so confused you couldn't sort of figure something out and it tightened up and it just stayed there or a relationship issue that hurt the heart and it's all tight in this area you know energy workers would know it's the chakra system what starts to happen is the physical body can't it's the cells don't feel comfortable to replicate. They're not relaxed enough in that area to replicate correctly. They start degenerating. The metabolism inside every little cell doesn't work very well. It's not kicking out its toxins properly. Um, so the, the the physical tissue starts to change in that area. See, it's from my point of view, like I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not part of the medical system. So the, I'm not prescribing anything here, but I'm just yeah. saying what I see as an energy healer and as a, as a sure. someone with psychic sight but so there's all these different interconnected systems the energy system our own monitoring you know of our lifestyle 
our food, our movement, our body movement, our psychology, our relationships, um, cleaning up our feelings, you know, old feelings, right? Yeah, I, I think that's a huge... Cleaning them up. <laughs> it's yeah. like sweeping the kitchen. The kitchen floor gets yeah. dirty. <laughs> And, and doing that on a regular basis, not just um, going for a clearing, for example, once um, and thinking that's all all we have to do. I think, would you say several times a year maybe? An energy to, clearing, like for the, yes. for the aura? So yeah. I, I teach um, a really simple but very, very powerful, simple technique that everybody needs to be doing every single day. And in fact, um, just any time, that um, we feel we might have picked up some kind of a negative energy, you know, because sometimes yeah. we, when we jump out of the um, when we jump out of the out of our front door and start walking down the road, um, we might just bump into something. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, and this really simple technique, and I'm very happy to share it actually right here. And it's uh, it's a visualization. Great, it? Yeah, it's a visualization and. Visualizations, there's a little secret I'm about to share. Visualizations are actually the secret to changing energy. So when we visualize something, we push energy around. Energy flows where attention goes, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so here's this little visualization. So the visualization is this. So in your mind, you imagine that you're, you're holding on to a little doll version of yourself mm -hmm. and you're imagining uh, a bright sun, a real bright sun, sort of up in the, uh, just somewhere. <laughs> and then you push the little mini you into the bright, right into the center of the bright sun. And in your visualization, you've got your eyes closed and you're actually following it with your attention. So there's a snap moment, like this kind of like really fast snap moment as you're pushing that little mini self into that sun where um, you, subtle impressions in the worlds of spirit and in the psychic, sight <laughs> whole world subtle impressions is how you get the feedback so um pushing it in it's you've just shoved it into the sun and then you'll get a subtle impression of little shadowy patches and right there is what you're wanting to deal with and right. the next the next step is to you're going to be calling on angels in that moment because but there's two things you point at those shadows because the, the your angel helpers actually want you to tell them what you want them to do so yeah. in that moment you see the shadow showing up in the sun and then you go okay that hey angels of light and love so that you can just use those wording if you want that wording if you want to angels of light and love please transmute is a great word that shadow so the you've got angels around you everybody's got angels around them and everybody is walking and talking constantly as a psychic intuitive spiritual intuitive i've been communicating dialoguing every day two-way dialoguing for 30 years for three decades right so i chat yeah. with them constantly and I work with them and partner with them in so many different ways. I'm out into the spirit worlds every day playing with them. So I just want to say, everyone, everybody's got angels around them. So feel free just to point at that shadow and just like buddies, support team, angels of love and light, please transmute that. So you're pointing at that shadow that you just saw. And then my recommendation is just to round out this whole technique is to do it a couple of more times. Actually, it's like refreshing the TV screen or the computer right. screen. Just push it back in. Let's just see if there's any more. Is, it, is there a little deeper layer showing up? Is there something else showing up just around you and that little mini figure being pushed into the sun? Because the sun's so bright, it reveals what's okay. not what's not light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. And yeah, and I love that. Like mm. we can do that every day, and we should, you know, we should do that every day. Yeah. Um, and that keeps us, keeps those yep. energy centres cleared and because we're picking yep. up negative stuff every, you know, all the time through yeah. um, other sources. Yeah. So if we incorporate that into our toolbox um, mm. with our fitness and healthy eating, keeping those energy centres 
and that's something we can do for ourselves. It doesn't cost us anything. We don't have to go anywhere to seek it. Yeah. And as you great. say, because you started chatting about going to see an energy healer, which is great, by the way, because that could be a really deep session. Yes. You know, like where you where something very deep in that matrix and that scaffolding gets found and gets um, yeah. pulled out and, and shifted for you. And, you know, your life can change gently yeah. <laughs> from then, that moment onwards. And then we can do our, our um, exercises that you just mentioned as like a maintenance program at home, mm. a take, mm. take home healing. Yeah, yeah totally. Which is good Absolutely. and that just keep, keeps, it, keeps it in check. Mm. It's a great, great tool. It's a great tool. Honestly, I just want to say that um, anybody who really plays with this tool will notice, because my spirit guys taught me this tool, and I started to play with it and I started to use it, and it was just a kind of uh, every now and again and just a light tool. And then I started to notice that every time I used it, they showed me something else about it, about this little simple tool. Right. And it, and it became this big tool. It became like very sort of extra layers to it. So the more you like do that. it, yeah. So it, it's not just a little simple little tool. It actually is like a doorway in to more and more and more layers that you can find even yourself. And a lot of it, a lot, just talking about this tool, this, this I call it the sun technique, this talking a little bit about this tool. Um, yeah, it is it is a doorway into noticing that you've got mates, you've got the support team of these angelic helpers. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're intelligent and they, as a spiritual intuitive, I love to sort of talk about this, they're intelligent and you start noticing that they're nudging you to look at something a little different in that moment, like as you're pushing the sun and pushing the doll into the sun, I call it a doll. <laughs> yeah, and, um, yeah. And they're starting to kind of show you things in there as you're putting your attention in there. So it's not just a little, little nothing tool. It's actually like a doorway into noticing more and more and more and helping yourself Quite more powerful. and more and more. Yeah, yeah. Just just thought I'd mention that because people yeah, may not realise. Yeah. Anyway, that's, no, that's that's actually quite practical. It's a... It's a great tool and people can support themselves. But I just want to I just want to come back to, you know, because there's people have got chronic physical ailments that have been mm. there for years and years and years, haven't they? Yeah, and and yeah, yet their yeah. their their soul and their, and their spirituality is longing for connection um, and deeper spirituality for themselves. So that's an that's a real issue. And I know a lot of people watching this are in that bracket where well, I've got something that just won't go away, you know, that's just some kind of a physical issue. What would you say, Claudine, to someone like that? Um, I think it's, it would, for me, it'd be coming from a holistic approach. So, of course, we've got our dealing with our medical practitioners um, and then having um, possibly a life coach uh, I was chatting with a friend on the weekend and many years ago she um, sought help from a life coach mm -hmm. and she ended up, um, she lost 30 kilos. Wow. Um, she, Just from having yeah. someone put it, uh, you Just know, kind of like walk with her. Wow. And just show her tools um, and then she um, healed her relationship with her mother um because and that was causing a lot of a lot of resentment and if we right. hold as you know resentment can cause us trauma and yeah, and disease totally. yep. so she healed that um and then she let go of having to be perfect she prior to that thought she had to be the perfect wife and mother and and cook and have the house perfect all the time do you know, so do you know Claudine I just want to pause on that because that's so intriguing for me just that yeah. It's like yes. so, so many people live in that way, don't they? Where they just, they've just got a burden on their shoulders where they have to match their husband's expectations, their wife's expectations, their children's expectations, everyone's expectations. And there's, it's a real weight on their shoulders. And they're just, yes. they don't, they don't realise that, 
that's unnecessary. Yeah, it's like a freedom. Once you're open and you have awareness and you are seeking and you are open to learning and perhaps working with a life coach, um, you're finding tools and where you can just let go and create a freedom for yourself. Um, and a whole new world can open up. Um, and so prior to that, she, she had all that weight that she was carrying around physically and mentally. So I think it was just, yeah, she just, the opportunity came to her for a reason, um, as they tend to come to, come to us. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she, um, yeah, was, a, and then from then she, she did explain that she has always um, worked with that coach or if not that one, other coaches. She will always, and, and that's what I think we mentioned in a prior chat, that it's ongoing work. It's and it's an ongo ongoing journey for our mental health and our physical health. It's not regular sessions. It's it's something that's every day, an everyday journey. Yeah. So yeah, it was really interesting to chat with her and that this question should come up at the same time. Wow, that's that's a great story. I love it. I really love it. Guidance. Yeah. Support. Looking for support. So important. Mm. Have you personally experienced that kind of coaching yourself? Um, I think I've seen different coaches or healers over the years, but after speaking with, with my friend, and this has come up on other research that I've read recently, um, I'm thinking if you could just find one life coach that can look at your diet and physical, because yeah. yeah. her coach looked at all aspects of her life, so right. it's the one person that you're seeing instead of seeing all different people over the years and um, right. you're, you're connecting with that person and yep. you're doing the work and you're answering to them. Um, so I think that's the way that I would prefer to go now. Yep. And so it's, a, it's an action, isn't it, that, that somebody takes. It's like they pick the phone up and they make an appointment and they, they action something, they action a change in their life. Yes. Instead yeah, of yeah. instead of like a victimhood or a feeling of it's too yeah. late or this can never change or because it's I just want to say quickly there's this really interesting thing that happens uh, when we do connect up with another person is that we start by osmosis picking up their point of view so we it's yeah. uh, there's mirror they call it mirror neurons. It's uh, we start to and I guess people even watching us are getting connected to our energy. It, it, it's like any human with another human, the mirror neurons <laughs> start sort of um, accessing each other's energy. So somebody who's really, say, have bad habits or want to change something about their life, if they yeah. pull somebody in, it's the same, the reason why people go to live yoga classes, because they're getting the dedication and commitment from the yoga teacher at the front of the room. And there's yes. this osmosis and the mirror neurons, we're picking up that person's level of commitment and dedication to yes. our yoga practice. Just an example. I just want to say this is something that's always intrigued me is where there's live speakers in a big speaking conference or something and somebody yeah. at the front of the room and there's this huge audience and I'm very aware that whoever's the public speaker kind of what they call entrainment they entrain everyone's kind of psychology in a way everybody's got their attention on them and everybody kind of like tuning forks they all come into harmony into phase phase lock yes of, they call it yeah you do you can pick up that energy from that speaker if they're yeah, exactly. a really good speaker exactly um, yeah, and so, yeah, so it's like if if somebody wants to change, find someone, a life coach, and yes. your mindset, your heart, your your most importantly, the key is your willingness to change. Yes. Your motivation starts to change. Um, your decision making starts to change about yourself. So, yes. because if you're in what they call stasis, where there's um, inertia where there's the, um, not the ability to shift off an old position. Um, that will, you'll remain stuck. Um, remain in stuck. Your old, in your old exactly. patterns. Yeah. yeah, exactly, on your own. And so you've got to bring in another energy. 
<clears throat> and that's exactly. the reason to, to grab a life coach or to grab another human who's going to pull you up, who's going to change your decision making, who's going to change your the way you think and yes. your feelings of motivation. <gasps> yeah. And, yeah. and the, the key point here, Claudine, is that, and this is the key, is and this is for everybody who's feeling like this and actually needs needs to shift off something, all of us do, um, is that it's not a logical thing. This thing of changing and feeling a new motivation is not a logical thing. This is, I think this is the point I'm trying to make and my spirit guides, I can feel them asking me to make this point, which is that when you do grab another human who's helping you, it's not a logical thing that your motivation changes. It's the mirror neurons which are deep in the unconscious. Is everybody just getting that, this point? That you're pulling somebody in so that your deep unconscious changes. So right. it's not it's not about excuse me <clears throat> it's not your logic that's uh, necessarily making that choice making the new motivation yeah. shifting it right. it's actually a deep unconscious new feeling that you're picking up the feeling from the other person yeah I get that <laughs> so yeah that's and magic kind of, that's yeah. magic I reckon and I think it's um, you can do it on a, on a smaller level too. Um, I tend to sometimes, if I'm going through a challenge, I might think of someone that I, that really inspires me, whether it be someone I know or someone, it could be an actor or it could be a character in a movie, but whatever I see in them, yeah. it, it's, it's, say, mm -hmm. for example, it's a certain strength, I might it might appeal to me, like a warrior strength or something. So I'll just sort of, I'll just sort of put that, I'll take that on and think, well, what would that person do in this situation? And I guess that's similar to what you're talking about with that mirror picking up on their energy and I'm putting that in inside me and that's just um, just giving, gives me the strength, gives me an inner strength if I'm Claudine, feeling challenged. I just, I don't, that want to make sense? <laughs> I don't want to interrupt because what you're saying is really brilliant. I love it. What a great tool. All of us can find a movie, a character that we, we know in our mind that we really related to or we really loved, yeah. <clears throat> that there was a feeling of strength, warriorship, whatever it is, you know, determination, mm. and find the movie and look at that character. And what you, I think what you just said is that you deliberately do something. You deliberately feel that osmosis, but you do it deliberately. So you go, okay, yeah. I'm going to look at this person and I'm going to, so what do you actually do? You make a deliberate decision in that moment to start feeling what they're feeling? Is that what you do? Yeah, yeah, and I just um, visualise them and their strength and their confidence and um, I just think what would they do in this situation? And I just think, well, they would crush it, so I'm going to crush it. And I just take that and I, and I go with it and it, all, it seems to work. <laughs> <laughs> To me, that's a psychic crazy, process. <laughs> I reckon that's a psychic process. Really? Um, and I so love that as a tool. Oh, my goodness. Anyone can do that. Anyone can do that. We, yeah, again, anyone. osmosis, mirror neurons, right? Yeah, yeah. So, just... so what we're talking about is state. State, so that we change a habit, so that we change a mindset, so that we change a decision-making, a level of decision-making, so that we start yeah. supporting ourselves and... Um, getting off stuckness, getting off it. Yeah, that's it. I just completely love that as a tool. Um, yeah, yeah <clears throat> we can do these things. We don't always have to go off and um, be a therapist or a healer if we can't get there for a re one reason or another. There's these tools we can do right at home. And so for somebody who's got a chronic, <clears throat> excuse me, a chronic uh, physical situation, um, this, you know, there's few different elements that they can start. Um, obviously, you know, working with with doctors, working with uh, medical support. Absolutely. Uh, but there's also mental mindset, inner state, and just start changing. And, and for me, the electromagnetic field, the aura which a lot of people are not very educated about at all. And it just isn't part of their daily thought, yeah, thought habits yeah. at all. They're just like, huh, what's that? That's nothing. Like it's invisible. You know, it's not, doesn't yeah, exist. Like, hey, wind's invisible. We can't see it, but it exists, right? Yes. So, and also people, because I've been playing in the aura, in the electromagnetic field for 30 years, I'm really aware at how it can 
how it really affects mindset and thinking and emotions, right? That's just what I've been doing professionally for 30 years. So if we keep our aura clean, our mindset, our emotions and our thought habits change. They get happier and more positive. Mm. I just need to say that. Beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like clean food, happy relationships. We just start staying. We get, we get happier. It's the same with yeah. the electromagnetic field. It, the, um, <clears throat> the electromagnetic field is a blueprint for our emotions. It's a blueprint for our body. It's a blueprint for our thoughts, our thought state mental state it is the blueprint so if you if you tinker in the blueprint and rewire the blueprint uh your emotions and your thoughts and your physical body um it really helps it really yeah. pu pushes it more to balance yeah <clears throat> and i think it starts with just trusting and believing that we and we don't have to be the victim in our lives we can find strength and find actions and and we can heal ourselves without with our toolbox absolutely absolutely would you mind reading that question again just that we're just yeah, that sure. we're really answering that question because i i feel yeah. it moves into yeah how to um get more into life purpose and how to support right. the mental physical in order to move into the life purpose which You're actually right. fits, which, which actually fits in really neatly with what we've been talking about in the last yeah. three podcasts isn't it? Well, it's um, Tracy writes, how can I get well mentally and physically so I can do what I came here to do? So that yep. last line <clears throat> came what she, what she came here to do. So we've been talking about mentally in the last few podcasts about journaling, about getting clear, about um, practicing mental hygiene by journaling, right? And also right. we so we talked about working with your spirit guides, um, learning how to use your guidance from your spirit guides and writing it out and getting building trust and confidence in your spirit guides and their beautiful inputs <clears throat> and guidance for you. So building that bridge, building that relationship with your spirit guides. Yeah. So, so we talked about the mental aspect of clarity around your soul purpose and your life purpose. And yeah, practicing yeah. every day, building strength, mental strength. And so she's talking about body and mind. So body and mind. Mm. I'm, I'm going to say that when I go to the gym or when I run and when I build heat into my body and push my heart rate up, and this happens every single time when I'm, um, this is just for, it's a big clue, it's a big tool. When you go into aerobic exercise and push your body to the point of where it's getting hot and the blood circulation's moving and your heart rate's mm -hmm. going up. <clears throat> um, shadowy energy, shadowy energy in the subtle energy systems, that, that blueprint, that scaffolding, the energy scaffolding in your yeah. body, that gets pushed out. I actually watch that shadow get pushed out of my body. If I'm on a stationary bike and just pedaling really hard and my heat, the heat of my body's going up and the circulation's yeah. going up, just suddenly all the sh shadow is getting kicked out. I actually watch it float out. Wow. I know. People don't know this about aerobic exercise. And this is why fast walking consistently for an hour mm. or half an hour where you build the heat up in your body starts to clean out your systems. It starts to create... Um, I just want to say the physical body sits on an energy blueprint and it's almost like an electric energy blueprint. And when you do aerobic exercise, that electric energy body, uh, that map that the physical body sits on, instead of being grey and sluggish, it turns into this beautiful blue electric blue and it's mm. bright. So the light brightens yeah. up in your, yeah. in your energy blueprint. Okay. So, so the physical body sitting on that map feels happier. <laughs> so, like and that. that's, yeah, that's such a good way to look at it and visualize it. Exactly. So, mind and body, body and mind. You know, to to move into her, the Tracy's into her um, life purpose, hmm. and 
And it's, it is, you and I have talked about this, Claudine, where it, it is about clarity, building clarity with those processes, the journaling processes and questioning yourself and um, taking the time to feel into yourself for, you know, what is um, a direction that you're passionate about. But we mm. talked about gratitude journaling um not just as a sort of thing on its own but as a way to notice what you love <laughs> remember we just yes. i'm just bringing it up again because it's about purpose if you're writing every day and you know that you're noticing that you're passionate about something and you just love as you're writing all your gratitude items over time you're going to start noticing what you absolutely love and what's important to you and it's kind of like carving out a depth in you as you're writing. Yes. Yeah, and that, that can reveal your soul purpose, what you're mm. here, what you're yep. meant to be. Yeah, what you... Because every time you're writing, every time you're writing, you are touching something deep in you. And so, yes. and so that depth is being talked about to yourself. You're talking about it to yourself, the depth of you. Yeah. So, so writing your gratitude lists becomes like a prayer to God in a way of help me. I want to align myself with my power. I want to align myself with my joy. I want to align myself with a sublime life, with a life of service and a life of where I'm getting feedback <laughs> from my from my life that I am on track, that I am on on track with my soul and my soul joy so yes. I'm, I'm just suggesting that writing out your gratitude is a very fast powerful way to get clarity about soul purpose do you have any anything yeah, more to I share agree. about that <clears throat> um and i think a lot of us don't realize that we we do we do want to serve others sometimes we're we're searching and searching and we we go full circle and come back to that we are here to serve others, whether it's our family or friends or in a in a working profession, there's it's usually it can come back to just giving back to others, which mm. fills us up and gives us the gift of giving. So, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Many many people at the moment with uh, the pandemic globally are stuck at home, and they're thinking, how can I serve when I'm just stuck at home? So for the, the very first thing I just want to say is that <clears throat> it is important to feel the need to serve and to notice how deep that feeling is, right? Yes, yeah. And then, and then to find ways. And as you're saying, Claudine, it could be just one person that if you might connect with in the corridors or down the street. And that's exactly. your opportunity to serve that person with maybe just a smile. And yeah. that's that you're clocking it up that's your service for the day <laughs> yeah that's right or if it's online um a positive comment on someone's post on facebook if you're online um just supporting someone else um there's all sorts of ways you can do it if you are at home what a beautiful idea claudine i love that just from the point of view of the person all you guys watching this the giving the feeling of giving we've talked about this too in the previous podcast as well I love the way everything's tying in and we're just moving from one to the next. Yeah, um, yeah. But but um, it's for you. You get the feeling of the giving. You get the joy of the giving. When, so you can put yourself on a program of generosity, of spirit. And, you know, as you say, Claudine, just a post on Facebook. What a great idea, you know, just, yeah. just giving, loving, sharing love, sharing positivity maybe that could just be the beginning of life purpose. You, you know, I just want to say really quickly a couple of things about, about contributing. <clears throat> if you're a healer, um, I just heard a story recently, a couple of days ago, of somebody's friend who was a healer, and they kind of gave up their hope and their dream of being a healer because they couldn't figure out how to do it professionally, how to make money out of it, how to support themselves and pay their right. bills out of it because – they hadn't figured that out. So there's there's a, a couple of things I just quickly want to say. If that is something, if you're already a Reiki healer or an energy healer and you do want to make that your life purpose, 
what I just gently want to say is you're going to have to do a lot of work to educate yourself about building a business. It's about marketing. It's about speaking and writing and articulating the kinds of things that your audience, so that your audience understands the value of what you give. So there's education around that. Get smart around that. Get smart yes. around how yeah, to. No, it's how one to thing speak to speak what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think, Claudine? That's just one I thing. Do. Quickly there. Yeah. Because I think my God, what a that. shame to give up your dream of being a healer because um, that business model isn't working for you. There's there's, a, there's another thing that people do say just quickly about business is never give up. Be persistent. Yes. <laughs> That's my motto. Is it? <laughs> I mean, there's an yeah. element. That's an element of business. Never get up. Be get, never give up. Be persistent. And yeah. then other people say, um, if it's not working in one style and one framework, you know, um, change, change the framework. Still be a healer, or still be. I'm just. This is just for for people who are in those healing professions and and therapy professions and yeah. are. And I'm just sort of wondering, how the heck, you know, am I going to make this work financially? Uh, so just pivot off, you know, and find some way. Look, the digital online world is an open forum for everyone. There's an unlimited audience for you. Um, it's to me, and it's something that's worked for me, is just get on social media and just share content and yeah. get you um, people get used to your beauty of your soul and you're sharing from your heart and they just start to enjoy whatever it is that you've got to give and they just want more of that. So it's about yeah. letting go of thinking that you're no one in particular and just sharing. Yeah. I'm just just letting, let, the yeah, online yeah. world, Claudine, don't you think? It's like yeah. jump no, on, just start creating a presence, you know. Yeah. And you'll and, find um, people, people gravitate, yeah. that the right tribe will gravitate toward you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so just... There's may, ways and means, and that's it's that whole thing of never give up <laughs> and yes. just pivot off and and put the work in. I put the work in for years, learning, educating myself about how to um, what works. And and by the way, um, things work differently for one person and that work differently for another person. Yeah, so that's it's, so it's, true. You know, don't sort of um, don't think you're failing because it's not working for you. It just doesn't match who you are. But yeah. but don't give up. <laughs> anyway, that, that was for the that was for the healers and the therapists. It's like, guys, go for it. There's yeah, so many yeah. opportunities. The really uh, <clears throat> people who start to do take the time and put in the hours and learn about online uh, the online business framework. It's not that hard, really. Um, but just do it. It is work. It takes work. And, and we need uh, we need we need. <clears throat> um, there's always room for more healers. We need healers in our world. We do. <laughs> we need more <laughs> of those, those angel hearts, the hearts that want to give and serve. So if you're one of those people, I'm just saying, don't give up. Educate yourself. Get in there. Boots and all. Rummage around. Find what, what find what's works for you. And I do want to say, by the way, a lot of what works on the online is just sharing your heart. It's like, and it's authentic. Just what we're doing yeah, right now. Yeah, just being yourself, yeah, being honest um, and sharing what's worked for what hasn't and what has worked for you. Yeah. And also giving tips and tools because if you're a healer, you already understand a lot of depth about life and, and how life works and you've got a lot of knowledge already. So just, just, a, uh, just a little bit of encouragement there for people, <laughs> you know, in, that, in those sort of professions. Um, I just want to say... Something else, too, is that for those of you at home where you're wondering, gosh, how can I serve? You know, how can I just feel that feeling of of service and of contribution? Um, and I love what you said about sharing, you know, positivity on posts, on Facebook posts, uh, you know, and just sharing happiness with people that you meet. But I want to mention meditation and building what I call your light quotient on a soul level so going into meditation regularly and you can do this at home of course and building your meditation practice because your soul is a field of light and the more you meditate the more that field of light builds its light quotient <clears throat> and you can do this at home in your in your lounge in your armchair right 
yeah, yeah. Build, building your light because we're sitting in a soup of energy and the more you build your light field guess what the light and the higher the light builds it's like a muscle that light is leaking out into that quantum soup around you and it's changing the subtle energy waveforms right through the whole energy soup so i just wow. want to say honestly this is a service building that your is, light building your light field yeah i've never looked at it that way before but that shows the power of of people power and if we're all practicing meditation and self-development that is a ripple effect out into the community it's subtle energy um people are not very sort of educated about it and i am really educated about it so yeah. physicists quantum physicists talk about you know the flapping of a butterfly wing it's a classic thing they talk about a butterfly wing flapping can create a, a thunderstorm or a tornado on the other side of the planet it's and because of these subtle energy waves so they are transferable the yeah. consciousness that's transferring itself and so mm -hmm. if you pump light by deep meditation states and you're at home in your armchair right but you're yeah. pumping light into your auric field that starts to change the quantum fields around you it upgrades mm. that general quantum field so beautiful. it's a really yeah it's a really simple beautiful powerful thing powerful. you can do <laughs> as, as, as a service the other thing you can write uh, again we are part of an online world we're part of a digital world um, some people watching this are not very familiar with that digital world but i just want to say that um, if you're a writer if you would love to express yourself look you can even do it with under a pen name you know so that people don't even know who you are but the writing and your thoughts and mm. your life experience you can share your learnings mm. and your experiences you can do writing there's medium.com i think it's called <clears throat> is where people write these beautiful deep essays so you don't have to print a book or even create an ebook for Amazon you can just write it on medium.com and it gets shared it's very viral and people find it and they read it and they get upgraded up uplifted <laughs> I should say yeah uh, so there's 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 ways that you can just simply be at home right and share your love just share your love what's another way Claudine just so people at home how can they serve <laughs> I've, I see because I because I'm spent I've spent many years now maybe 15 maybe 20 years in the digital space I'm really aware how simple it is just to to share your heart and to share your knowledge and um, it's not that complicated right look we can right. you can set you can send an email to a friend you can yeah, pick that, up that, pick up the phone and absolutely and talk to a friend you could send a text an encouraging text to a friend who might be having a, a problem or an issue yeah it's keeping up the communication really isn't it which we can lose sometimes with friends and we in our we're in, busy in our own lives so keeping up that communication is important that's right and making a decision that's exactly right making a decision to to support people that, and that's right yeah and, and knowing that we can we mm. we are quite we are powerful we can help others yeah and so what i'm thinking about in this context of what we're talking about with this question is for so many people in so many different situations and circumstances at home how they can start feeling in their own heart that they're supporting and serving people and feeling the love and giving themselves an opportunity to feel that generosity of spirit because we're doing it all, I know it sounds funny, but we're actually doing it for ourselves because we want to feel the, the feeling of service. That's right. That's what, as they say, the gift of giving. So yeah. it's for both. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. giver and the receiver, they, they yep. both receive the gift. Yep. And so with Tracy's question, I just, what, one last thing here, Claudine, is the body, the mind, the body, mind, What's another quick little tip that you would give with the body mind um, building strength? Um, so I think 
being aware that and having a toolbox and having a having possibly a spiritual coach and then you've got your life coach and then the little things so with your clean eating um, and your tools at home with your journaling and gratitude practicing gratitude and and knowing that it's a continuation every day it's not just going to be a, a short-term thing this is ongoing every day practicing putting all these tools into practice and knowing yep. that it's coming from inside and and not so much for, to look outside for quick fixes that often we've got these blocks inside that need to be dissolved and and continually worked on Beautiful. I love that. And I want to add to quickly something that I've been mentioning in our previous podcast for me is that to turn around inside your mind and talk to your angels and talk to your spirit guides and build that relationship with your spirit guides. <clears throat> we talked about this is uh, and ask your spirit guides for help. Because if you yeah. if you if you are wanting to expand your your service um, for humanity and in your life, that your spirit guides know exactly how you can do that and how that you can change. And they will tweak your thinking. They will tweak your circumstances so that that starts to happen, so that you start moving into that groove of, of life purpose and of service. So that's a really key point. So it's in your mind. You just turn around to them and regularly are instructing them, telling them that that's what you want. And they'll start sort of morphing something something things will start changing on the inside on the outside so i just wanted to add that just to, beautiful yeah, yeah just to complete the session thank you claudine i think we've just thank you we've had fun answering that and i hope that everybody got, has got some good little tips and clues from it some tools um we're just sharing our life experience here right just what we've experienced and um and I know it's going to help a lot of people just listening because I know when people listen to a conversation, they get ideas. It's like something inside their mind, just, they just get ideas and it opens up new thoughts for them. And that's, yeah, that's yeah. why we're doing this podcast. That's the idea. It's not, and it's just nice to be inspired by others. Uh, we all get inspired by things we hear and, and there's certain light bulb moments that we have. So, yeah, um, yeah it's just nice to share our experiences. Yep, totally. I love it. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Claudine. You. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> see you Thanks, soon. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.